Hey, hello everyone. My name is Maria Santia Samwa, Executive Director at Barbex Africa Projects Limited. It's a family business started by my father and we offer mine support services. Outside of that, I started sharing my experience working in that family business, just, you know, writing about it. That led to me starting a podcast where I actually invite different family businesses to the studios to share their stories, the hopes of, you know, changing the narrative. It's always been said that family businesses die after their founder, and we're trying to change that. I'm happy to be here today on Jet for Women Africa. All right, so to answer that question, I kind of have to take you back. Um, I I moved I moved to Canada to well for my undergrad, and then when I finished, I I, I selected well I did political science and international relations, and the plan was to work with the UN. That was my thing, you know, just from Kofi Annan and being inspired to do that. So after work, I decided to move to the US to Washington DC because I believe, you know, that's that's where the action is when you talk policy and politics and all of that. So I moved to DC and well, everything was going great till I had to support the finance and operations director for a couple of weeks. When I started working with her, I realized mm -mm, I preferred I preferred the action on that side. I like numbers, you know. And so I I just enjoyed the finance and operations aspect of the of the business and decided Rather than go back for my master's like I had planned, I was going to go to business school. I visited a couple of places. I went to Colombia. I really wanted to go to Northwestern as well. And well, for all of them, they said I needed more relevant work experience. I said I had work experience. They said relevant. So that's the key word. And so I started applying for jobs in the field, in, in you know, what's in the business field and it, it was just becoming frustrating. I got a job in a bank. Too many issues. Anyway, so I I came home for holidays and my mother was like, well, if you want business experience, why don't you just work with your dad? I mean, he has a business. He's doing well. Why don't you just come home? Moreover, you're always talking about missing home. So why don't you stay and work for a couple of years, get that experience and go back to school? So that was the plan. I mean, coming in 2008, it was just to get experience and then, moved back for business school. Um, the story changed. I, I came here. I enjoyed what I was doing. And then I fell in love as well. So I got <laughs> I got married. Business school has happened, but I, I just never went back. I, I never went back. Not because I planned on working in the family business but and got stuck. I, I just came to get experience and go back. But I enjoyed what I was doing and, you know, circumstances changed and that's that's how come I'm still here, 2024. One of the reasons that got me to start sharing my experiences because I believe I I I I knew him as daddy. I had never really paid attention to his work. Yes, I know he traveled a lot. I I knew a little bit about the business, but I I just not changed my mindset to accept him as boss. So the first few years was a little tough for me because he's in, you know, he's working, he's just following what needs to be done and all, but I'm still looking for daddy at work. And it was just, <laughs> it was just weird. It was a bit difficult um, just, you know, coming to terms with it. But my dad is very, he's very quiet. He's very... He's, he's laid back, he's chill. So it, w it wasn't too bad. I think the problem was me. I just wasn't used to, I hadn't accepted that that's my boss. I, there were just certain things that I hadn't, um, you know, tuned my mind to. So it was a bit tough for me, but overall, I think, I think it was fine. And the good thing is he stayed out of my way. I think I was reporting to somebody else. In fact, interview, agreeing on my rate, my salary, everything was done with somebody else. So at least there was that line that was drawn and it helped it helped a bit. Different generation. So please, even for me now, I'm struggling with the Gen Z. So I so so now I'm being very respectful and I've asked for forgiveness for how I treated my father in the beginning. But I think it's just a case of 
I understand it's just different. We're we're all different and I've come to appreciate it. Now, did I was it easy when I joined and I didn't understand why well, why don't you want to be on social media and why don't you want to have the website up and why don't you want to brand brand our cars? Like things like that I didn't understand. You know, the the older generation is more conservative, you know, they're, they're just certain dynamics that seem different. I didn't understand it then, like I said, but now with the Gen Z stretching me at work, I realized, okay, that's how my father felt when I was pushing him with all these things, let's get on social media, et cetera. But I think um, generally it's um, it's been cool. We just need to make sure we're aligned with our vision. I think those are the key things when it comes to family businesses. You said, let's start to understand we're working towards a goal. We're doing this together. We're not working against each other. Those things are important. How we do it or how we get there. Yeah, we may differ in our thoughts, but it's fine. <laughs> My father started this in 1990 through this business and his income. He's been able to take care of us um, right through to university. I I love the fact that I can I can give back. I love the fact that I can carry on his legacy and help, you know, just continue what he started. I think there's something fulfilling about that. You, you can, it's it's rewarding. For me, I just appreciate the fact that I can give back and, you know, it's like somebody's taking care of you. You've, you've grown into this person. You've been educated to, you know, through his contribution. And so coming back and just helping build that legacy for me, I think is rewarding. And yes, definitely appreciate that. How do we manage conflict? So I think everybody talks about conflict, conflict, but that the different families, you know, family dynamics kind of affect or influence what happens. And in our case, we're well, we're a family of five. It's always been just that. So it's we're very united, we're very close. Again, I talk about that um shared vision. That's key in some of these things. So if if you have conflict, I think the main thing for us is, is just communicating. It's trying to respectfully, you know, share your opinion or say what you want to say without, um, they, they don't feel hurt if people don't take it, et cetera. I, I, think, I think how, just giving people room to express how they feel is key. And then, going through the process of explaining why certain decisions need to be taken also matters. And for us, we've built that structure where, you know, you can respectfully share your grievances and then, you know, also understand that whatever decisions are taken is in the interest of the business. So it may not be, you may not be happy with certain decisions, but the business comes first with some of these things. And but the key thing for us is communication. It's just, expressing how you feel respectfully and also accepting feedback. <laughs> I'll tell you a story. When we got, when we got married, um, I mean, this was me fresh, you know, I just worked for like three years and then we got married. And throughout that dating, like there, there was a day my husband just said, <laughs> I think we're supposed to go for lunch and I would ask that, you know, let's go, let's go. The family's going for lunch and he's like, I don't want to talk about anything apart from business. And and for me, that's that's when I realized, look, that's all we talk about. Everything is business, business, business. But I we had to appreciate the fact that there are there are other people in the family that don't work in the business. Um, my little sister, for instance, my husband, now their children involved and also it's that making that conscious effort to separate the two. Um Yes, there are, there are times when we have to talk business outside of working hours and all. But even for my own mental health, I, I just try to use the work when, when, when I'm somewhere, I'm present. So if I'm with the family, if it's about, you know, family quality time, then that's what this. I make sure wherever I am, I'm present in that place. And I um, also make conscious effort to take vacations every now and then. Um, it's needed. The pressure is too much these days. So it's just making sure you have to be intentional with these things. That that's all it is. <laughs> By all means, go for it. I mean, 
oh, why? You shouldn't be asking women, men. Please, well, one, go for it. I, I, I don't see. I mean, if you listen to my podcast, we've had different women on there, and they they're doing great things. The the, the doctor that took over from her father, and you know, she's moved. They've moved from a clinic to a full blown hospital. I mean, people. You know, they talk about women leaders being, we're nurturers, you make things happen. So for your business, that's a seed. And women make things grow, you know, we take care of stuff. So certainly go for it. Um, I, I don't, I'm even lost with the question, please. I don't see why not. We've had a lady who, um, she's, she's in a male-dominated um, area. She's working in um, energy and she, she's taking her father's business to the next level. The father passed. Nobody even noticed that break. There was no break because she's she's been able to move that business to the next level. I I would encourage women to go for it. Yes, sometimes there's that little um, pause, or you tend to question yourself a bit. Seek help where you need to grow. I mean, educate yourself where you need to get professionals to support the business, but. By all means, once the passion is there, once you have the heart for it, I say go for it. Don't 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 hold back. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I've enjoyed um, this interview and look forward to more of such. Thank you.